Hello, thanks for calling Reasonable Doubt. Hey, it's uh, Rob Tuckman. Uh, good evening. Hey, Rob. Um, sorry to interrupt you, Todd. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to welcome the judge on the show. I know I'm not the host anymore, but uh, uh, we got, uh, well, between us, there's uh, four hosts, uh, Pat's and I think, Judge, you may be the uh, first uh, sitting district court judge to uh, be a guest on this show. I'm not sure, but I think so. But I do know you're the first uh, liaison that HCCLA has had. Uh, we welcome that. It's been a, a long time coming. Um, I, I wanted to ask you a question that uh, uh, relates to the court appointments, and I don't really do them, um, but it's been a concern of the defense bars for a long time that the Fair Defense Act um, – is not observed in every single court. I'm not asking you to criticize uh, individual judges, but we look at statistics um, at the end of the year, and we see uh, annually uh, there's typically 10 lawyers who have been uh, responsible for moving 3,000 felony cases. That's an average of 300 felonies each. There's no way that anybody can argue that that's competent representation. That can't possibly be um these are not uh lawyers that uh i'll just refrain from criticizing them from commenting on those lawyers but i'd like to hear your comments on how we can get closer to the fair defense act i like your ideas and i like your scheduling i think it's a good idea and it works real well i think it's a fair uh amount of time for a lawyer in the average case um but it's a it is a big concern that, that while you um are interested in justice i'm not sure that that when we see 10 lawyers handling 3,000 felonies, that the lawyers that are appointing these, I'm sorry, the judges that are appointing these lawyers, I'm not sure they share your same interest in justice if they're doing that. And it happens every single year. Thank you, Judge. I'll, I'll uh, get off and listen. Thanks, Rob. All right, thanks, Rob. Um, I, look, I, I don't know what to tell you about that. I don't know what others judges do or how they go through the appointment system. I know how the system works. I know how it's supposed to work. I know that we follow it uh, to the best of our abilities to make it work. We quarterly get a um, the statistics for our particular court on how closely we're following the Fair Defense Act. Um, so I know what our court does. All the other judges get that as well. I mean, it comes in our in our mail, like I say, quarterly. Um, I, I don't I don't know what to tell you about what the other judges do. Yeah, I mean, this county obviously has long struggled with indigent defense. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's I mean, look, it's the largest county in Texas. Uh, we just got a public defender's office only a few years ago. Um, it's going to be a constant struggle, I feel like. And, uh, but, but I do think that there's got to be a way, and, and maybe, it's, maybe it's to utilize the magistrates more or something um, in, in this process to, to, again, allocate resources better. Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, I, I, I don't know. But, but, I mean, is there a way that maybe taking, taking the appointment out of the district court's hands or in, in terms of the actual appointment itself, but putting into either the, ma giving, vesting more authority in the magistrates to do the appointments or. Well, the law will think, allow them right. to appoint. I, I don't believe that the law will allow it our magistrates not. here to do that. It does not. Um, I mean, I, I will say this, it, I'm only in my court. I don't go around to other courts. I don't know how it is there, but I'm in meetings with these other judges and Look, I don't see how it's practiced every day, but I, I know from talking with them and seeing them, that's what they say. I mean, mm -hmm. they say that they want good, competent representation of everybody. And I, and I take them at their word at that. If they're not doing that, or if people feel that they're not doing that, then that's between them. And some courts specifically use contract lawyers. Right. Um, they have a con right course. Uh, those folks work for a salary for that court per year. But like, uh, but that's only a few, as far as I understand. Like Maybe I said, three. though, there's 
especially now, especially these days, it seems, in the last couple of years, and certainly I think going forward, there's someone, one of the judges at least, I mean, there's a judge ahead of just about every committee, and there's all kinds of committees that you can imagine. Fair Defense Act is a committee. Indigent Defense is a committee. There's a judge in charge of those. And I know that that judge in particular and the people, the other judges that she works with are constantly looking at that in ways to make it better. We can never stop trying to make it better. It's never going to be perfect, but we can always move towards that, trying to find things better. If it doesn't work, if this isn't working, we can find something hopefully that works better. And if that's still not working, find something else that works better. But it's constantly being looked at and discussed. I mean, I know we discuss it all the time. I think What's our you, time? We got a couple minutes left. We got probably. I used to ask. Oh, sorry, I'm hijacking your show, Jim. It's all right. I used to ask these okay. questions. <laughs> what time we got? We got another call coming in, I think. Well, good. Hello. Yeah, thanks for calling right. Reasonable Doubt. Yeah, um, uh, thank you all for having what I think is one of the most useful uh, reasonable doubts I've ever seen, and I've seen quite a few of them. This has been a public service, and people needed to hear about uh, about all the things that are that are trying to be accomplished here. And along those lines, uh, I've, I've heard it said that a disaster, a natural disaster, is a terrible thing to waste, and it should be with that with that same intensity that you guys get it together and start using smartphones for scheduling, smartphones for face-to-face, -face, uh, you know, all of the stuff that's been in the general population for so long, you need to apply it now or you'll never have the chance. Yeah, Thank I you. agree. Thanks, thanks yeah. for that comment. Judge, one of the things that, um, <clears throat> that I know you have, to have, you have to have had some criticism for or some, some pushback is um, in your court, when it's time to approach you, it's time to approach you. Mm -hmm. And you're one of the few that hold not only the defense bar to, hey, it's time to, this is time. There's no more back and forth. You not only hold the defense bar, but you also hold the state, which I have seen, to say, hey, look, it's trial time. Let's go. Um, how have you dealt with with that because I know that it's it's tough I mean you have a big case you have a you have a case and it's like this you know the government the defense bar is making some excuse or the government's making some excuse um, for not being ready how have you helped how have you dealt with that and and how are you uh, continuing to deal with those things and you know just your thoughts on that uh, well I, I I go into every interaction in the courtroom with the state and the defense with the idea of y'all are professionals. I'm going to assume that you're going to do your job to the best of your abilities on both sides and that I can trust you in some way to tell me what's really going on here, whether you're ready, not ready. If you're not ready, why are you really not ready? I will always listen. But if I think that you're messing around on either side, I am going to hold your feet to the fire, mm -hmm. period. Because you both, both sides, have an incredibly important job to do, I think. If you are going to stand there as the state of Texas at any point in front of 12 citizens and ask for somebody's liberty to be taken away from them in whatever form or fashion, then you better do your job the best of your ability, honestly, ethically, all of that. And if you as a defense attorney are going to take money from the taxpayers as an indigent defense attorney, or you're going to take a large sum of money from somebody and they're depending on you to make sure their rights are being looked after and they're putting their faith in you, then I expect you to do everything you can possibly do, ethically, morally, to represent that person to the best of your ability. And if I feel at any moment that's not happening, then yeah, I'm going to get on you about it, whether it's you or the state or anybody else. Because the people that are in that courtroom on both sides, the citizens, the accused, the victims, whatever, 
they deserve to have both sides advocating to the best of their ability. And if everyone does that, then this, this thing that we do, it's going to work out. Let's see if we can sneak one more phone call in here before we get off the air. Mic drop. Uh, I wanna... That was huge. That's <laughs> strong. Ah, Hello. Thanks really for calling strong. Reasonable Doubt. Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Um, I have a quick question for Judge Hart or any of the hosts um, that ties into competent representation, sort of what Judge Hart was just commenting about, and the callers um, comment about the Fair Defense Act and judges... Um, certain judges appointing a few number of lawyers with an extraordinary amount of appointments for indigent uh, people. Um, I know Judge Hart mentioned that he can control what he does in his courtroom, but as an objective observer, I was wondering if he had any comments on some kind of accountability that might be put in place to prevent that sort of large number of appointments going to lawyers who can't possibly uh, provide competent representation, and if there's anything that the public or the indigent people who depend on that representation could do in the community. And I'll take the answer off air. Thank you. Thank you. I actually have an answer yeah. a little yeah. bit for that. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, the way it's supposed to work is when somebody needs a lawyer, they tell us, we pull the wheel and that spits out however many names it spits out. I've seen that list as small as three people or as, as large as you know three pages long. And as the judge, you have to go through and you pick from that, sometimes you're limited, the most competent person that you think can handle that case. Now, up until recently, and it hasn't started yet, but one thing that we have talked about and I think and hope it's gonna start soon is in addition to that, we can see how many active cases the lawyers have pending so we can factor that in to the appointment that we make so I'm hoping that that's I know it's been talked about it's well, they say they can do it ABA right. standards yeah. yeah that's that's great